another episode of Just Plotting Around. I'm your host, Royce Williams, and on today's episode, I'll be previewing the, the upcoming AEW pay per view, Dynasty. Now, this is a new pay per view for AEW because they've been told to start adding more pay per views to their schedule because they initially only held four pay per views for the entire year. And they started adding to that over the last year or two. Initially adding a Forbidden Door to the list and following it up with a Wrestle Dream in honour of Antonio Inoki last year. And both and as well as adding in uh, all in as an official pay per view which will which all reports suggest will be AEW's WrestleMania. Now they've added a Dynasty to the list. Now the first match that was officially uh, announced for the show was Will Ospreay versus Brian Danielson. Now this was supposedly a, a a dream match for Will Ospreay, and well, Brian Danielson saw this as a a, a good test to see where he is at this point in his career. Now, Brian Danielson has also said that this will be his last year as a full-time competitor. He wants to uh, spend more time with his with his family. So, I mean, he'll still wrestle part-time, but he won't be on the road as nearly as much. So he'll be taking more the Roman Reigns route in that he'll only appear when he when he needs to. Yeah. This match well this the way I see it is Will Ospreay needs this win more than Danielson does. But I see it being a very technical match. Because I mean Will when Osprey wants to work a proper match, he is very talented. Unfortunately, he doesn't always want to work a proper match. As evident in the match he had with Ricochet in New Japan a number of years ago, before Ricochet signed with WWE. But Will Will can Will can work a decent match if required to. So I'm gonna go with Will Osprey winning this match. I mean, it could go either way, but yeah, I've got Osprey winning. Next up is. The the Young Bucks versus FTR for the vacant AEW World Tag Team Championships. Now it was announced on Rampage uh, this last week that it it'll be a ladder match, which will be rather interesting. Now. The, the uh, AEW World Tag Team Championships were vacated after the revolution as Sting and Darby Allin had retained the Tag Team Championships against the Young Bucks in what was this, which was uh, Sting's retirement match. And Darby Allin also happened to get injured not long after that match he was planning on leaving uh, after the match anyway to climb Mount Mount Everest unfortunately he got injured so the the mountain climb was being put on hold for now but I digress so upon vacating the the tag team championships the yeah, AEW held a tournament to crown new champions and 
that's what's led to this uh, ladder match. Now, personally, I would have had the Young Bucks win at Revolution, so they they didn't have to have this tournament, but they didn't win, and we had the tournament. So I've got the Young Bucks winning this, just to go with this whole EVP shtick that they're going with now, just to rub it in even more to that they're the they're the top guys uh, no pun intended so yeah yeah the I got the the bucks winning next up is a house rules match for the AEW TBS championships with Julia Hart versus Willow Nightingale uh, Julia Hart has been fucking good since she's been TBS champion, well, really, ever since she's joined House of Black, to be honest. Um, and, well, she's, and since becoming TBS champion, she's improved even more. And I've, I've enjoyed, I've thoroughly enjoyed this run. Now, at this point in time, at the, at the time of recording, I don't know what uh, stipulation will the Willow Nightingale's chosen. Uh, it could be anything. Uh, so, but I'd like to see Nightingale uh, win because at the next pay per view. Uh, Mercedes Monet has the next title shot at double or nothing. So, and Mercedes Monet and Willow Nightingale already have a have an established rivalry. So to have Willow Nightingale win this match and t- and go on to face Mercedes Monet at double or nothing would make sense It'll t- just to continue that rivalry so yeah I've got uh, Willow Nightingale winning uh, speaking of the House of Black uh, they are involved in our next match which is a trios match between Adam Copeland, Eddie Kingston and the new ROH world champion Mark Briscoe versus the House of Black which is Malachi Black, Brody King, and Buddy Matthews. The House of Black have been a great trio. They've been rather dominant since they've formed in AEW. And they've. Malachi Black has been a master of blind games. I swear he's taken a few pages out of The Undertaker's book because he's got that very gothic-y, demonic, satanic kind of vibe going that The Undertaker has always had outside of Biker Taker. So... Yeah, he's he's got the he plays those mind games really well. But that said, Adam Copeland, Eddie Kingston, and Mark Briscoe have been pretty well. They've been good individually. Uh, Kingston and Briscoe have gone on the same page, and they seem to be quite formidable uh, but yeah I'm a, this much it's that, this much is hard to call really but I'm gonna go with the house of black winning then maybe they continue the feud 
going into into double or nothing. Somehow, we'll have to wait and see how that goes. Uh, next up, we got uh, Timeless Tony Storm defending her Women's World Championship against Thunder Rosa. Now, Thunder Rosa never officially lost the World Championship last in in, in 2022. Uh, she was out injured. She remained champion for a few months, but she ended up uh, dropping it and. Uh, Tony Storm and Julia, not Julia Hart. Uh, what's her name? Britt Baker's friend. Uh, and were retroactively given Women's World Championship status. Uh, Jamie Hater. Yeah, the Jamie, Tony Storm and Jamie Hayter were given uh, retroactive uh, Women's World Championship runs, uh, no longer interim runs. So then, yeah, she, the uh, Tony Thunder Thunder Rosa, ended up coming back after eighteen, nineteen months on the shelf after being injured. And she faced Mariah May in a number one contenders match in the state. Federosa and Mariah May were one and two in the rankings that AEW have. So, yeah, Federosa beat Mariah and earned the shot, yeah, earned the match for at Dynasty. Now, I have Tony Storm winning. She's been a rather dominant champion. Thunder Rosa, I feel, doesn't need the championship. Or, realistically, neither Tony Storm nor Thunder Rosa need the championship. The championship, it goes well with... Tony Storm's gimmick, but I see, I, I can see the championship playing a part in the breaking up of Thunder Rosa and Mariah May, oh, I mean Tony Storm and Mariah May, sorry, uh, so, I, now and especially now that uh, but so I don't know uh, but they've now got uh, uh, Diona Perazzo being put in the mix with uh, she's now going got a bit of a side beef with uh, Thunder Rosa because uh, since Perazzo tried to help Thunder, given the the rivalry between Tony Storm and Diana Perazzo, so I can see Perazzo interfering in the match and costing Thunder Rosa the the championship, and maybe we've and that might set up a either triple threat. Or a fatal four-way match at double or nothing for the world champ for the women's world championship. So Thunder Rose is my pick to win this match. Uh, I mean, Tony Storm's been rather interesting since winning the championship. Her character work's been amazing since she's done this timeless gimmick. And I hope it continues for a little while longer. Next, we have Kazuchika Okada defending his Continental Championship against the returning Bastard Pack. Uh, Pack's been wanting competition. He's been demanding it from Tony Khan. He's gone 
Puck's gone out of his way to just run through jobbers and take people out until Tony Khan gave him competent competition. And then he started targeting uh, Kazuchika Okada. So Tony Khan gave Puck a shot at the Continental Championship. So, well, I reckon it'll be good to see Puck win. Uh, he hasn't held a singles title since he won the International Championship when it was the all it, when it, well, he's the inaugural International Champion when it was the All Atlantic Championship. So, and he hasn't held a singles championship since then. He has also he also held the Trios title. At the same time. So. But he hasn't held a single title since he dropped the international title to Orange Cassidy. So. I can see Puck winning this. He's, he's a great. No, if he And if he doesn't, I can see him tearing up Okada until he gets what he wants. But yeah, uh, I've got Park for the win. Next up, speaking of the International Championship, we got Roderick Strong defending the championship against Kyle O'Reilly. Now, Kyle O'Reilly returned at R- Revolution, I believe, if I remember correctly. And to help with the Undisputed Kingdom. But he told Roderick Strong that he wanted to carve out his own path and he wanted to do his own thing by himself, which Strong initially accepted. But they teased the crossing of the paths quite a few times and say we're always talking given that there's a long-standing friendship between the two uh, on at Battle of the Belts 10 uh, Roderick Strong faced Rocky Mar- Romero in a uh, in a championship eliminator, eliminator match how to Rocky Romero won, he'd be given a championship match, but Roddy won through some questionable means, then Kyle O'Reilly came out to help Rocky Romero and to try and stop Roddy from doing further damage since it was four on one. Then Roddy turned on O'Reilly. And because of that, Tony Khan had granted O'Reilly this championship match. Now, I see Roddy retaining the championship. O'Reilly is still pretty green. Uh, from well, not, not green, but rusty. A little bit since he's been off on the shelf for a little while. So, and Roddy's only just won the championship. He needs it. He needs the championship. The championship needs him. And it goes well with his building up the dominance of the undisputed kingdom. So, as long as. Uh, Strong's got the championship, then the Undisputed Kingdom is going to climb up even higher. Now, they just need Wardlow to win a championship, and he's going to... I believe he's going to go after the World Heavyweight Championship, which is currently held by Samoa Joe, who is set to defend the championship against Swerve Strickland. Which is the next match. 
uh, Swerve Strickland and Samoa Joe. This match is going to be a fight. This is going to be a bloody slobber knocker that knock down, drag out, pier six brawl. Every adjective that fucking JR would use to describe this type of match. One where both guys end up getting covered in blood. Uh, they had a contract signing on an episode of Dynamite. Uh, Samoa Joe signed the contract Swerve Strickland didn't sign it Samoa Joe was about to walk out and Swerve end up using the chain he wears to try and choke out Joe Joe end up fighting out of the end uh, dominating Swerve slamming him through a table wrapped the chain around his fist and sort of belting into uh, Swerve busting him open and Swerve said that he loves that shit and end up signing the contract in his blood so this is going to be a war to say the very least so I hope they pull the trigger and give Swerve the championship. He truly deserves it. It's about time that he became the world champion. It, uh, he's put in the work. He's over. So Swerve's my pick to, to win the championship. And... I hope he gets given a lengthy run. I mean, he 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 he, he needs it. It's it's kind of like the whole Cody yeah finishing the story storyline. It's about time that Swerve gets to finish his story by beating Joe. Uh, there's. A number of options for Swerve to face that is greater than what Joe could face at this point in time. Given that Joe's a heel and Swerve's a face. So, so yeah, Swerve's my pick to win. And that's the end of... That's the entire card now make sure you go and follow me on all of my socials at JPA podcast on insta twitter yeah, just putting around on facebook bulldozer51 on youtube so go give me a follow give me a like on spotify for this podcast now I've started a another podcast called Crime Zone. They'll be based on true crime. So go follow me follow me on that. I haven't posted anything on that yet, but be patient. I'll be uh, posting I'll be uploading episodes on that shortly. Just gotta get my material for it. So the first episode on that will be dropping in the future. Now, make sure to catch me next week as I do a review of Dynasty. Uh, and until then, I'll catch you around. <laughs>